Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x squared minus 14xy plus y squared equals 0 and we're going to evaluate x over y plus y over x. I'll be presenting two methods even though the first method could kind of be split up into two approaches maybe something like 1a and 1b. All right great let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by y squared. So here's my original equation. And then we'll divide everything by y squared. You'll see why. Now here we get x squared over y squared, which can be written as x over y squared. Here y squared cancels out with y, so I can write this as 14 times x over y, and then this is plus 1. Obviously, x and y both have to be different from 0, otherwise I can't evaluate this expression. Make sense? Okay, so now this becomes a quadratic equation in x over y. So let's use substitution. Let's replace x over y with t. And that gives us t squared minus 14t plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now this equation is fairly easy to solve, don't you think? We could use the quadratic formula because it is quadratic, right? So let's go ahead and see how that goes. t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 196, minus 4ac. That will be minus 4, right? And then we're going to divide the whole thing by 2a, which is 2. b squared minus 4ac. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. t equals 14 plus minus the square root of 192 divided by 2. 192 is 4 times 48. Let's go ahead and break it down. 4 times 48. And 48 is 4 times 12. And 12 is 4 times 3. Okay, great. Let's see. Our goal here is basically to take out the largest possible perfect square. And in this case, it will be 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. In other words, 192 is 64 times 3, or 2 to the 6th power times 3 to the 1st power in the prime factorization form. And then if you square root it, 2 to the 6th power will be 8. Okay? t equals 14 plus minus 8 times the square root of 3 divided by 2. If you divide everything by 2, you get t equals 7 plus minus 4 root 3. And guess what? This would be the x over y values. Obviously, there are two values, 7 plus 4 root 3, that will be x over y, or 7 minus 4 root 3, that would also be x over y. Do I need x over y? Yes. Am I supposed to find that? No. We're supposed to find this sum. And y over x is just the reciprocal of x over y, right? So if x over y is 7 plus 4 root 3, then x over y plus y over x becomes, let's go ahead and write it here, in this case, x over y plus y over x becomes 7 plus 4 root 3 plus 1 over 7 plus 4 root 3. So we're supposed to add the reciprocals, but to deal with the reciprocals of radicals, we're going to use conjugates. So multiply and divide by 7 minus 4 root, through, 4 root 3, so you can rationalize the denominator. Make sense? So from here we get 7 plus 4 root 3 plus... Now, 1 times that is going to be the same thing. And at the bottom, you're going to get a difference of 2 squares, which is 49 minus 48. Wow, that's equal to 1, isn't it? Yes. So that gives us a 1, which is nice. And now from here, these two cancel out. We end up with 14. Wow, that's interesting, right? That's going to be one of the values. But of course, we have another x over y value, so we have to use that as well. 
So if x over y is equal to 7 minus 4 root 3, then x over y plus y over x is going to be 7 minus 4 root 3 plus the reciprocal of 7 minus 4 root 3. And we're going to use the conjugates again. And that will give us 1 again from difference of 2 squares. So we're getting 7 minus 4 root 3. This is 7 plus 4 root 3. Divide by 49 minus 48, which is 1. And these two cancel out, and we get 14 again. So it doesn't matter which x over y value you use. x over y plus y over x is always going to be the same. Okay? Let's go ahead and talk about the... Oh, by the way, I was going to talk about the 1b. So we basically divided everything by y squared, and we got... Uh, we named it t. So you could also do this directly, like in the original equation, you could say, hey, suppose x is equal to yt, because this is a homogeneous equation, and then you'll get the answer. Of course, the answer will be t in this case, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. We could even talk about a third approach, maybe really briefly, if we have time towards the end. So here's our equation one more time, x squared minus 14xy plus y squared is equal to 0. So my second approach basically treats this problem differently. How? Let's go ahead and put the y squared on the right-hand side by subtracting. So x squared minus 14xy equals negative y squared. Now, I want to add something to both sides to make the left-hand side a perfect square. And that can be obtained easily by considering the following. What is a half of 14 squared? half of 14 squared is 49. So what I need to add is then 49 y squared to both sides because then we'll get a perfect square. And isn't that perfect? Now this becomes x minus 7y squared and the right hand side becomes 48y squared which can be written as 4 root 3y quantity squared. Is that term familiar to you now? 4 root 3, that came up before, right? Now, if a squared equals b squared, this means two things. Either a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b. So we're going to have to consider both. That gives us two solutions as before. So from here, we get x equals 7 plus 4 root 3 times y. And from here, x over y becomes 7 plus 4 root 3. And the second branch comes from the negative 4 root 3y. And of course, at the end, you're going to get something similar, right? So those are the x over y values. But remember, they both give us 14, right? Awesome. Now, what is an alternative approach besides all these methods? Well, you can kind of consider this equation, you know, x squared. Oops, I was going to show you a graph. Too. Anyways. Uh, I, I think we'll, we'll finish with the graph, uh, not to keep uh, make it too long. But anyways, this is a graph of these two functions. I don't know why I don't have the second one. I guess it didn't fit somewhere, or I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay. Anyways, well, I have a single equation. Anyways, I thought it was a system anyways. So we have a pair of two lines. And x over y basically represents the slope. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.